Welcome back to the Whole Topic Podcast. This is episode 15, and today we're talking about scheduling and routines, which is one of my favorite topics. Mine too. Ever. (laughs) I am a huge fan. It's not my favorite. (laughs) So you're going to be like the ones that we say, if you're not a scheduled person, you need to be. Is that going to be you? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) That's me. That's me. So Mm -hmm. scheduling and routines, the reason I think I like them is because children thrive on them. Mm -hmm. Children thrive when they know what to expect next. If they don't know what to expect next, it causes chaos. And so not only is that chaotic for them, it's chaotic for yourself. I remember when I first got married and I started like, even just down to routine naps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was always chaotic in the first like year, year and a half when I had the kids until one lady told me, she's like, you need to have some sort of routine that they can look forward to that they know. Okay. So after lunch, then I get to take a nap or, and oh my gosh, that changed everything. And that's when I really hit me, even though I've always kind of been a organizer person, that's when it really hit me how important schedules and routines are for kids. Yeah. I started, I, my blog post this week is on schedules and routines. And I started researching like the benefits of schedules and routines. And even for adults, having a schedule or having a routine, um, is, has a lot of benefits to you. It instantly removes stress levels. And one of the things they said in it that I thought was really interesting was from the moment our eyes wake up, we have to make decisions Yes, all the way down to like, mm-hmm. when, you're, when your alarm goes off, you make a decision, whether you're going to get up or push the snooze button. When you um, get out into the kitchen, you decide if you're going to have cream or milk in your coffee, like your, bo- your brain is constantly making decisions. And if we can schedules and routines will innately just help you to um, make some of those decisions for yourself. Like they're not even a decision you have to make because it's already done for you because you know what to do. And so I, it was saying how instantly it relieves stress off of an adult yes. when they have a schedule or routine. Yeah. Like every morning, I know coffee and Jesus is the first is thing the first I'm doing. Yeah. Then a load of laundry and like, and you just knowing exactly what, um, before we jump into any more of the questions or like thoughts on this, I want to say something that really, honestly, in the last couple months changed me. And I saw it on Instagram of all places. Um, and it was a reel where this, this girl, she, I think she was a neurologist. Is that what you call people? That, yeah. That people. I think so. Anyway, she said, these are three things she never does. And the first thing is she never scrolls social media first thing in the morning. Cause that's when your brain is waking up, becoming most active and your, your brain is ready to receive like and if you're filling it with social media, she said more often than not on the days that you wake up and first thing, look at your social media, um, you're, you will tend to go back and back mm-hmm. and back over and over instead of just filling your brain with, um, what you actually need to get done or what you want to fill it with first thing in the morning. And I am here to testify that that is 100% true when I don't, and I've kind of made it a rule. I don't even touch my social media in the morning. I get so much more done on my to-do list within the first three hours of the day. And I th- kind of like what you wrote on your, on yours, you said, talked about if you don't like schedules. Think of it more of a, as a rhythm. Yeah. Look at it as yeah. a rhythm. And that's what I have told a lot of people because they're like, well, I'm just not a scheduled person and that's okay. I mean, God created us all for our own unique abilities. <laughs> But Mm -hmm. find some form of a rhythm and the rhythm, how rhythm is different than a schedule is it's how your day is going to flow. It's what you're going to do first, second, third, fourth, fifth, all the way throughout your day. It's the rhythm of your day. It doesn't matter if you wake up at eight o'clock or you wake up at five o'clock. That's how your rhythm is going to flow. That's how your day is going to flow. And it still does well for you to have a rhythm to your day than to wake up and be like, I don't even know what I do first today. Then you Mm -hmm. have knowing kind of what you're going to do today and how it's going to flow and how your day is going to flow will remove that. So when you're not a scheduled person, think of it differently. You don't need to have time slots that you do everything. I do. I like that, (laughs) but it works for me. That's how my brain works, but not Mm -hmm. everybody is like that. And that's okay. You don't have to, but if you have some form of a rhythm to your day, it's going to do well for you. And if you're not a scheduled person, I mm-hmm. like what she said about as far as like, don't, I can't even handle like, oh, at 605, I do this. No, I don't actually. I don't do that either. <laughs> I get up and I do what I'm going to do. Check out Jordan Page because With she, blocks. she mm-hmm. does block scheduling, which mm-hmm. 
if you're not a scheduled person is way easier. Like, okay, from six to nine, I'm going to, you know, go feed the animals and eat breakfast. So whatever, however order you do it in Mm -hmm. that block schedule, you just kind of know, okay, from nine to 12, that's when I'm going to school the kids or whatever it is you're going to do in that block Mm -hmm. schedule. Um, It's super, it was super helpful. And I, when I first saw her stuff, I kind of was more rigid and I did have my clock set, but now it's kind of in my head. You just know, I just know what I want to get done from each block. But Ariel, I want to talk to you as someone who doesn't enjoy schedules as much what would mm-hmm. you say to the person who could be struggling and just need some sort of rhythm to to get through their day instead of having just right. like constant chaos? Right. So, and to preface, I feel like the reason why schedules don't always work out for some people is because they don't have control about certain elements that happen in their day. Mm-hmm. Um, and that might be your on call or you have family that bursts in at any time of the day or people need you like and for sure yes you might feel that as a mother but you can structure your children but when you have certain people who maybe aren't healthy in your life or you are an on-call person then you don't have full control of your day so for that might be one aspect of it so it's not always that people just don't like scheduling Mm -hmm. it may be that at that season in life, they cannot always rely on their schedule to keep them on point. So they have to have like fail safes, like backup days where they can get stuff done. Um, I will say that the one thing that helped me because early on, I didn't, I was a rhythm person. I wasn't a schedule person. I tried so hard over and over and over again to be like, okay, nine to 10, we're going to do this 10 to 11. We're going to do this. And then Jordan page was like, don't do that do it in blocks. And I was like, okay, I can do blocks. So I tried to do blocks, but then invariably it would fall apart because something would come up in the day. And that would just, that would give me anxiety. The fact that things would keep happening in the day that took me away from the schedule. And then I'm like, okay, where am I going to make up this time? But the one thing that helped me, and I don't know if it helps anybody else was just finding the priority of that day. The one thing one thing that you want to get done in that day, if you can just get one thing done today, what is it going to be? Mm-hmm. And just knowing that you did the one thing on your list that day made me feel like, okay, it's okay that I didn't get the pile of laundry done. I didn't get the the dishes are stacked up in the sink and nobody wants to do them because they've <laughs> all got things going on in their life. And it's like, who can manage to, because we don't have a dishwasher. Do you guys have a dishwasher? I have six of them. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we we hand wash. Yeah, we hand wash everything. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. and so I don't know, just things pile up around your house, which make you feel like you oh, can't yeah. do the things on your list because your house isn't taken care of. So just focusing on the one thing every day that I want to get done has helped. It, and can I speak to that? Adding to it, I want to speak to that because um, I just read this the other day, and it's something that's really helped me a lot when I'm writing out my schedule for both house cleaning and for my blog or whatever it is I'm working on. And I heard someone say this, they said, write down the most, like the three most important to do list Mm -hmm. in order that you feel the most pressure to do. And that way, anything that goes be like below that, just bump it to the next day. And that's, it's, you're so on point. If you prioritize what is absolutely most important to you and get that done, Mm -hmm. even if you can't, like, I don't keep up with exactly what we have to get, what we have to get done every day. However, if it falls through the cracks, I know the next day I'm going to cover something on it, but it's just like getting your priorities. Even if all you did was just get your priorities on a piece of paper, um, like, okay, homeschooling my kids is a priority. So that's going to be at the, literally at the top of my list every single day. Um, And I think that's for those who do struggle with scheduling, maybe just put a priority list together and Mm -hmm. keep track of that as you go through your week. I think that's really a good point. I'm going to add something to that and be set your expectation, like be realistic Um, because nothing Mm -hmm. frustrates anyone more than if you have these unrealistic expectations for your day and then you can't meet them. Well, nobody can meet some unrealistic expectations. So if you know you're processing tomatoes that day and canning them, yes, don't set anything else in that day. You're not also going to clean out the hall, the hall closet. Exactly. And organize it. You know, I mean, yeah. just be realistic. You're yeah. not going to do both that day yeah. and homeschool the kids and yes. then get all your meals and do everything else. So be realistic. Pick that thing. If it's a big thing, that's your thing for the day. If it's a small thing, 
you can maybe add another thing with it or two things with a it. A good scheduler, a good routine person, good rhythm person knows how much they can do. And they know and how much yes. to leave on their list and what to drop. Yes. They know that they can drop things and not feel guilty about it. Because that's a, the biggest thing with people that right. keep schedules or struggle with it, I think is because of the guilt they feel for not having it perfect. Mm -hmm. So you're yes. not going to be perfect. I am a big schedule person and I don't get every yeah, single thing yeah. done on my list. However, if I do yeah. get something extra done, I will write it on my list just to check it off. Me too. It's very fulfilling. Yeah. So do that for yourself. And that way, if you don't get something else, yes. you're like, well, I did do but this. But I did do this instead. So <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, yes. And I will, I do and, it. And I erase it. I erase the thing I didn't get done so I don't yeah. have to see oh, it. Oh, do you? <laughs> and don't, this goes back to our boundaries talk. Say no to things. When you already are at your cap, when you already have your fill and you know your your time is valuable, say no to things. You don't have the time to add another thing into your schedule. Right. Say no. Know when to say no. Right. Yep. But that's up to everybody else to decide for themselves. Yes, for sure. Yeah. I totally agree with that. Okay. And then I wrote another thought down because like someone told me this. I think I heard it on a podcast. And quite frankly, I don't know where I heard it. I have an issue with listening to things. And I'm like, wow, that's a really good point. And then I don't write anything down. I just move on with my life. But someone said this to like, as the mother, or as the wife or whatever, whoever's doing this in your home, you're the CEO of how your home runs. Mm -hmm. Your kids are looking to you to, to, to make sure that things are in order and what to do next. You can't expect your kids to just fall in place and do whatever it is that you expect them to do without you le like fully leading it. Now, that doesn't mean I don't assign jobs to my kids and say, hey, I expect this done. However, it does mean that I am mm -hmm. going to follow up with it. Right. I am going to show up and be like, hey, did you complete X, Y, Z? Like you, you're, fit, you're the, like that's create, you're creating an environment of, um, I want to say no chaos, but like an, an environment of a just peace. a peace. Yes. In yeah. your home. Just by setting your expectations as the CEO of your home, like as far as menus, like you're the chef, you're probably the financial person, you're probably the meal planner, the shopper, you're in charge of the cleaning, you're like the, all these things you are the CEO of. And so when you look at it as that way, like, oh my gosh, like I have, you're I have personal had, shopper. Yes. <laughs> yes. The chauffeur. Yes. The chauffeur. Yeah. Like you are responsible for making it not chaotic and that doesn't right. mean you're going to be perfect at it there are going to be days period that are just chaotic mm -hmm. but if you could like i said if you can get rid of the guilt for not getting something obviously if you didn't get it done it wasn't that important for that day right. that's how i look at it if i didn't get it done it probably wasn't of that utmost priority. important mm -hmm. the things mm -hmm. that i actually put time into and was like hey i need to do this those are the things that were important for that day and if you can mm -hmm. get to the place in your life where you can see things that way um it helps a lot. It also helps to have scheduling friends like you guys. So like, if you're not a scheduling person, surrounding yourself with other people who are not motivated people is not healthy for you to progress and get to a better place. I love that the majority of the friends that I have and keep close are all very meticulous planners. Yeah. And they challenge me to do better in my life. And it goes, it bucks against my like, my natural state of being because I'm a very, I'm very laid back. I'm very chill. I'm pretty much the person that lets other people do their rhythms. And, and I navigate my day around my family's rhythms um, with giving them certain tasks if they don't know how to give themselves tasks, but my family generally knows how to do that. But surrounding myself with good friends like you guys who tell me like, Oh, I was doing this, this, this today. And I'm like, Oh man, should really, I should really block schedule again, or I should really fill more things into my day because I am capable of doing more. If other people are able to do it, I am too. So that it's incredibly helpful to, to surround yourself with people that will challenge you. Yeah, And so. when at the same time, won't judge you. Right. Like if like, yeah. if whatever works in your home is mm -hmm. going to work for you, but it is so true. If you have a to-do list, I was telling my kids, um, actually, I think I wrote this down to start slow and create small habits if you have no idea where to start. Mm. Um, so most tasks in in your home, a lot of people don't know this. And I even tell my kids this when they're getting discouraged by a chore that's gonna take, I mean, it's I know it's gonna take a bit. I have challenged them to set the timer for five minutes because most tasks take under five minutes. Mm -hmm. 
washing the bathroom sink. Like I have a, an assignment for each of my kids. They have one part of the bathroom. One has to wash the sink in the mirror. They well, they don't even have to wash the mirror every day. They just have to check it. See if people splattered toothpaste all over it or whatever it was that they did. One of them has to check the toilet bowl and just make sure it doesn't need any kind of maintenance. And then one of them has to just wipe down the edge of the tub that collects dust throughout the day. Um, and those tasks all take two minutes or less. Mm -hmm. And I know that because I timed that. And so it encourages my kids to be like, you know what? That literally takes me two minutes to sweep the porch off. Takes two minutes to sweep the steps off. Takes two minutes. And so most tasks in your house, when you start creating habits with them, they take under five minutes, five minutes or less. M most tasks period that you do are going to take, unless you're doing a canning project or like a bigger project. Those are maybe on your priority sure. list. But creating small habits to like, okay, I'm going to sweep the kitchen floor every day. I don't care what happens. I'm going to sweep the kitchen floor. That takes me under, unless you have a giant mansion of a house, that generally will take you mm -hmm. five minutes or less. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at it in time, mm -hmm. like, okay, that actually is not going to take me that long to do. It helps mm -hmm. you build those habits quicker. Number one, number two, it just helps you realize all these little tasks that are adding up the mundane tasks we talk mm -hmm. about will actually, you can probably get done in 45 minutes or less. Mm -hmm. At least that's how it works in my house. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's so much quicker than most people think. And then when you create enough of those small habits and they're getting done every day, the bigger ones are not as daunting because you're like, oh my gosh, that's taking me 15 minutes. Break it down in some time, like time yourself and try to just decide like, and then it, it helps even my own kids. Like when, like I said, when they get overwhelmed, I'm like, just at the clock mm -hmm. and try to try to beat the clock now still do it right. And still do it well, mm -hmm. but realize it doesn't actually take you six hours to do the dishes. Right. It, it, it can take you 15 mm -hmm. minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's a thought that I had, um, and, and those tasks can include wiping the counters. And I learned this from um, Queen Mama. I think her, I think that's her Instagram handle. And she said that when she first started uh, cleaning, she has been a working mom and a stay-at-home mom. And she said the five things she's done every single day, and we, we should link her her website here because she has amazing stuff on her content on her on her site. But she would wipe all the counters and tables, like all the surfaces. I include the bathroom sink with this. She would sweep all her main living areas, like anything that she was like, I want that swept every day. And she would run a load of laundry. She would spend 15 minutes decluttering. And then there was one more thing she would do. Oh, make her bed. That was always something she did. She just made her bed, started in the morning, making her bed and did all that. And I remember like, it was several months ago. I was like, I'm just going to try. Like, it can't hurt to like include those daily habits. And I did. And it has changed. Like it has literally changed the way that my kids do things. And then I started splitting the, the tasks up with the kids a little bit too, because they don't take very long. Mm -hmm. So just giving yourself a lot of grace and starting small is huge. Mm -hmm. So my question was, do you have those cool visual printouts for your kids or do they just do this all on their own? So I actually am still working on a system. I told Stephanie the other day, I'm actually trying to work on making a complete planner, like a complete like control journal, if you will, for the house. And I do have like yeah. different tasks. So like we'll have a weekly chore and I'll circle the week that we're on. And then like whatever that weekly chore, that's actually where I spend my 15 minutes decluttering. Whatever room is that week, that's where I'm going to knock out my 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that by the time we get to like washing the floors, it's done by the end of the week, we've mm -hmm. done a 15 minutes there. But yes, I do have tasks that we check off every single day that has to get oh, done nice. within that day. And it is super helpful. And if it's something you have to write every day, because I write everything, I've definitely found it's better just to get it on a printable paper. And even if you don't have a sleeve that you can use over and over again, printing off a master list of this is what I want to get done every day and being able to check it off really quick is totally beats trying to write every single day the same list over and over again. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> she did it. <laughs> <laughs> So my, my going along with this is when you start in any form of schedule or rhythm, give yourself 21 days or more yes. of doing it before you change anything. So if you start some form of a schedule or rhythm or routine, it's within that first 21 days, it's probably not best to say, well, yeah, we can go to the park today mm -hmm. and mess it all up yeah. because it does change 
how you think and the rhythm that it flows. Do it until it's a habit. Once it's a habit, you can go on a Thursday to the park or you yes. can go on a Thursday on that field trip. And the next day, everyone just jumps right back into the routine because it's still their habits. Yes. But when you're creating that habit, when you're creating that rhythm for your home, it's so crucial to stay home. One hundred percent true, and I can testify to that because since we started like deep cleaning the entire house, like I don't want to ever have to do spring cleaning. We're mm-hmm. just going to. Since we started doing that, I did make that habit. I'm like, we're not going anywhere. We're just going to stay. And I know it's a lot of work these days, but now we're getting ready to start our rotation over again, and it's going to take us maybe a half an hour to deep clean each room because it's already been done been done and the habits are there now even this morning my kids wanted to come play with stephanie's kids while we're here recording and i had some things i was like you have to get this done before we leave and it was all done by 8 30 this morning and the house is spotless and i'm not saying everybody's house has to be that way like i have kids that are all creating routines and and doing this they've been doing it for a month over yeah over a month now and so she's absolutely right stay home to create your habits don't get out of the rhythm if you don't have to, of course, mm-hmm. if there's a day where you have to go do something, whatever you, you're going to figure that out. You're going to figure out what's most important, but she's definitely right. Creating those habits with your kids and having them yeah. get into the routine. And we're not saying you can never, ever do anything again. Yes. We're just saying <laughs> while you're creating, right. stay home yes. and get it into a habit. Otherwise it's really hard. I think 21 days is a good number. Like I, I that's, yeah. that is a um, statistic somewhere. I yeah. mean, that's, that's a study that yes. if it 21 days makes a habit. So if you want to stop something, you need to do 21 consecutive days of that habit or break that habit. Don't do it for 21 days. And it's no longer a thing anymore. Yes. Yep. Yeah. When I was younger, my dad made me read a book, seven habits for highly effective teens. And as an adult, I picked up Seven Habits for Highly Effective People. Mm. And I will say that book is gold. And I know it's a classic for a reason, but if you haven't read it and you're struggling with habits, go read it. It gives you the statistics like you just mentioned, and it it goes through how how to develop habits and what makes it successful versus what makes you fail. And it, it it takes the time to deep dive into the different scenarios of different people's lives. And it's, that's a great book to go. Yeah. And I like what Jordan Peterson says. And like I said, just because I mentioned someone on here does not mean I agree with every little thing they say. If someone says something awesome, then I'm going to take it and apply it to my life. But I'm just Mm -hmm. want to just preface this by saying, just because I mentioned somebody's name doesn't mean I agree with them. But he said something about like, if you can't even keep your room cleaned, don't try to go out and change the entire world. Mm -hmm. And it's so true. I've even noticed with my own kids, like they're in the habit of making Mm -hmm. their beds every morning and making sure their clothes get brought downstairs and Mm -hmm. they can do it now. And their minds are so much more clear during the day and they can accomplish way more. I don't know what it is about keeping Mm -hmm. a clean room, but it is, he's right. That's something that he says like, and I think it's his point was, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I think this, this is the gist of what I got from it is like, start small. Like if you can get yeah. the smallest task, keeping your bedroom cleaned and making your bed, like everything yeah. outside that is going to be, it's just a stepping stone to accomplishing more in your life. Yeah. yeah. And, and keeping it close to home, taking care of your home, your space first. And that was part of his point. It was take care of yourself first before yes. you attempt to take care of anything else in your day. Because so the- often people roll out of bed and they just they just go and attack the world like, hey, but one thing that I have on here that is a daily habit and we talked about daily habits that will help your schedule is and I didn't put it on write it down on here, but I was just thinking of my daily habits and this goes all the way down to before I go to bed. My daily habit before I go to bed is to put your house to bed before you go to bed. If you put everything away and that's not cleaning, that's just picking up. If everything is in its place before you wake up, your coffee is prepped to start right when you wake up. You have no dishes in the sink. Now, if we have like a cup or two or a cup, the, my family loves ice cream. If they have ate a bowl of ice cream, I'm not going to wash dishes before I go to bed. I just don't. But there's a neat little stack of three or four bowls in the sink. I'm fine with that. But everything else, and the kids know too, like they go around, I'll tell them, clean up the living room before you go brush your teeth and they'll go clean everything up. They put the pillows back. It does something to your mental state when you wake up yes, in the morning. Absolutely. When you wake up and you have a clean slate, you don't feel like you're already behind in your day. If you wake up and your house is a mess, 
you feel like you're already behind. So whether mm -hmm. you want a schedule or you don't want a schedule, whether you think that it's even needed, if I can encourage you to do one thing, put your house to bed before you wake up or before you go to bed in the morning, you will, it'll change the way your day starts because mm -hmm. it just does something to your brain. When you wake mm -hmm. up to a mess, you feel like you're a mess <laughs> and I don't care how early you get up, but you're cleaning up yesterday's routine to try and start a new routine that day. And you're already behind. So I told yeah. my kids the other day, cause I heard this somewhere and they said, uh, don't borrow time from tomorrow for what you could do today. Yes. And that's so, what you're usually generally doing. If you're just going to leave. Yep. And and that doesn't mean when you're a crazy, busy, tired mama. Yeah, to just and, fall asleep. That's yeah. okay. Yes. And yes. like, if your sink is full of dishes and you're like, I'm totally dead. That's one thing. Yeah. yeah. But it does mean that do your best if you can. Mm -hmm. This is just yeah. a benefit of working with rhythms and scheduling. If you can do what you can today, so you don't have to borrow time from tomorrow to accomplish something that could have been done the night before. And make sure your kids are involved. I was just going to say that. Don't do that all on your own. That can be a family thing. Yes. Like we, after showers is typically when we do it is, and before ice cream, because our house, you know, desserts, a big deal. Yeah. yeah. Um, husband has a sweet tooth. So mm -hmm. if, if like, that's part of our nightly routine, yes. everybody yeah. showers, we've cleaned up dinner. And that's usually why there's ice cream dishes in the sink, yep. because the quick clean, what we call it, or getting everything put back away happens before they get dessert, they're in their jammies, and we're winding down for the night and having our family time, whether yes. that be watching a movie or playing cards or whatever. But our mm -hmm. quick clean is happening before that. Yeah. So everybody's involved with it. And it just happens. It's, yep. it's not a huge task that mom has to do after she puts her kids to bed. Now, if you have really small kids, that, can, that be can be very different. And maybe you need to put them to bed at seven o'clock, and then you need to do the quick clean. And that's yes. okay. But mm -hmm. I would encourage you, even at two years old, get them involved. Yes. Even if mm -hmm. that is picking up their own toys before they mm -hmm. go to bed. Yeah. It sets the habit and the training young. And it yep. just sets the tone for how you, how you run your household. And if you have bigger kids that can help, when your kids can do more and they're capable of more than most people yeah. think. Like they can be just as helpful in the home as you are. Like more often than not, I'm not the one making the messes in the house. Right. Like it is my kids and that's mm -hmm. okay. I'm okay with that because they're living there and they're trying to eat and they're trying to like whatever it is, but making sure they're involved. But even at night, like they now know, like, well, they have known what their chores are. And it's just basically like, Hey, go back and just double check your chores make sure they're all tidied up. And so it's not like, Oh my gosh, like I, you, I cannot believe I have to go, but no, they already know that's their habit. Habits, it, habits are huge. And they, they do right. call it like, as we said in the beginning, the less chaos that you can have, and you are the CEO, so you are the kind of the person that they're going to look to, to direct them. And like, you don't have to have a perfectly angelically clean house. That's okay not to. Have done what is really important to you that's going to cause peace, though, for you and your home. Yeah, for sure. I, I talk to a lot of different kinds of mothers in my profession, and um, this is all wonderful advice for people who know how to talk to their children and mm -hmm. know how to get their children involved. Yes. There's a whole subset of women who, who do not have good communication with their children, whether they're young or they're old. Um, what would be your advice, how to talk to your child, to get them to help you in a grateful attitude? First, I would start by listening to our episode, cultivating Relationship. relationship with your children because mm -hmm. I think it's going to start there I I if if you can't communicate I just uh uh I think I sent this to you I think I said it to both of you yesterday mm -hmm. about the um where it said if you can't um if you can't have a relationship with your kids at two don't expect a relationship with them at 18 mm -hmm. yep that, I I feel like I can go through the whole call to relationship with your children but if there's poor communication something something is there's not no okay in the relationship and that's where I would focus on before, before you start creating a bunch of habits with each other. Um, that doesn't mean you don't have expectations like, Hey, make your bed and put yourself away, mm -hmm. but work on repairing the relationship first to figure out why are we not communicating? Well, what is it between us that's causing this problem? Cause there's nothing else I can say. I can't say, Hey, well, you just have to sit your kid down and make them know you can't, no. something's not working there. So we will link the cultivating relationships with your children and, and the, thing below and I also have a couple blog blog posts mm -hmm. that speak to this as far as like three habits I think I have one that says three habits um to create powerful relationship with your kids and then I have one more called five habits to five more habits like that's it. 
it's another habit thing. It be to create, you're creating, create the habits, cultivating a relationship with your kids before you start creating a bunch of habits to clean your house. Right. Um, mm-hmm. and, waste your time. and I yes. think it goes down to, we actually just had this talk with my girls this morning before they got here, because we had one in particular that didn't do two of the things on her list today. And so I sat them down and I calmly just said that, um, you know, everything on your list should take you less than a half an hour. Yes. And that is the animal chore that you have making your bed and whatever the room chore is that day and whatever the task of the day is that day, unless it's long today, we were having friends come over. So I knew to do a small task of the day. And I said, out of respect for me and how I run my household, I don't ask you to do a whole lot, but out of respect for me, I need you to get up and, and look at the list and you accomplish the half hour time that I'm asking of you. Yes. And she did. She looked right at me and she said, I'm sorry, mom, you're right. And I said, it's just Mm -hmm. out of respect. I respect your time and let you do a lot of free time. I don't ask a whole lot. I ask for half an hour of your time first thing in the morning. And if you do it and you do it right away, it's all done for your day and you have your day. Yeah. And she was Mm -hmm. like, you're right. And so I think staying calm, if you do feel like you have a good relationship with your child and you do have respect, kids are are human. I make mistakes. They make mistakes. We all are going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. You drop the ball. We just, and, and the part that I got frustrated with and why I was like, Hey, this needs to be addressed was because I knew she didn't do it. And I mentioned it twice to her and she told me when she was going to do it. And I said, well, you do know that your chore is mopping the two bathrooms and you need to have dry time in there before they get here. And she said, Mm -hmm. I know mom, I have plenty of time Mm -hmm. and it didn't get done. So, Mm -hmm. and then it was 10 minutes before they arrived. Andrea had already said we're on our way. And I said, you didn't do your room tour. And she said, well, I was going to do it right now. And I said, well, it's too late now. They'll be wet when they Mm -hmm. get here. You can't do it right now. And so Mm -hmm. that's when we had the conversation. So I think that even when you have a good relationship, Mm -hmm. it's it's going to, it's, they're going to mess up. They're not going to told to do we we this is not a new process for us and it's still she missed it because she just didn't feel like she didn't like and I I'm, I switched my things up for my kids I don't know if that's how Andrea does but she doesn't mop the floors every single day she sometimes somebody else does it sometimes I do it it just it rotates but having those conversations in a calm manner and and put it in a term of more of like this isn't just because you disobeyed me this is out of respect for each other can you give me a half an hour of your time yeah and, and respect that yes. this is how I'm running my household. And I, th- I think that came across better to her than me saying, I'm really disappointed. You didn't, you didn't obey. Yeah. You and didn't do it. Yes. Um, if and you- I'm not saying I'm perfect at that. Sometimes I do get frustrated and say, yeah. right. Why didn't you do it? <laughs> <laughs> if you do have, I, I heard yeah. this the other day too. And I just, I love little tips like this, but if you have a child who's very hard, one, Generally, the hard children are going to, you're, they're teaching you something and you're teaching them something. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't grow without that hard child. Mm-hmm. And uh, I heard this one lady say, she was like, and it was just a real, so it's not like I keep track of like, okay. Who said it? <laughs> yeah. But she was like, somebody asked her, they're like, what do you do when your child is completely out of control and anger and frustration and stuff like that. And you can't even like, it's so hard to even deal with them. And she just kind of sat there for a second. She's like, okay, I want you to imagine like, how does your kid feel right now? How's your kid making you feel right now? Like, are they making you feel crazy in the head? And generally when my hardest kid is, is frustrated me, I, I literally feel like, oh my gosh, like, what am I doing with wrong as a parent? Why am I failing so miserably in my entire life? And she's like, that's how your children is there's Your child is feeling. They're feeling the same feeling they're giving you is probably what they're feeling inside. Like just total out of control chaos inside. And she's Mm -hmm. like, if you can start relating yourself to them that way, you don't get so frustrated. Yeah. And then you, she's like, your job is not to frustrate them. It's to bring them back to a place of calm. And once you Mm -hmm. both place of calm with each other, you know, it got fixed, you know, it got resolved. Mm -hmm. Um, because like, okay, for example, one of my little ones, she's very like, literally my, she's just amazing. <laughs> she also, <laughs> she is me. Uh-huh. And I'm like, so she will take me to levels that I like, of course, I'm not going to sit and scream at her because right. she's my daughter. Right. But she'll take me to like emotional frustrated. levels of like, okay, Lord, 
I don't understand what I've done in life to deserve <laughs> such a feeling. <laughs> but, but then if I sit with her and using that piece of advice of like, where's the calm? Like where I need to calm myself down, focus on calming myself down. But in turn, like we're working together to find that calm and bring us back to that place of peace. And when I do that with her, mm-hmm. it's like night and day difference. Instead of like, if I respond as if I'm trying to take care of my own need to be calm and how I would want to be talked to, to talk myself off of the crazy Ledge. feelings I'm feeling. Yes. <laughs> and it does yeah. work because I'm doing it from place calm and I'm feeling her pain. It, it, I think we're given that as moms so that we can feel their pain and their frustration to help them regulate that. Like, mm-hmm. so it's not a bad thing when your kid does that. They just need you to help them calmly regulate it, not be, not join their level of crazy, right. which more often than not could be mm-hmm. some, some parents like first, re, you know, response is just to join them in the crazy and get equally as frustrated. You're not a child. Like you're the parent, you're supposed to be mm-hmm. helping them learn to regulate their emotions. So I would honestly just right. say, check out um, the cultivated relationship. Um, cultivated, I think it was cultivating relationship with children. Yeah. We'll post that mm-hmm. um, episode in here. And then I'll post the, the two links that need to go in here for my, I guess it would be top eight um, habits that I would create to have strong relationship with your kids so that you can communicate with them, even if it's hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I was scrolling um, the other day and something came up and it's odd that it fits here, but it was this guy went to some remote village and it was a different religion, but they believed that there was only one disease and only one cure. And if you look at science literature, there's like 150,000 different diseases and so many different things that you can do with them. But, and when he brought that to this man, the man was like, no, there's only one thing wrong, one disease. And that's, you're out of balance the cure is you need to get back in balance, whether that's your food, your relationships with your spouse, your children or whatever, something is off, something is out of balance. It's what you said, the peace, Mm -hmm. something's off. You need to find what it is. And I find that interesting that that's, that they considered it like a disease though, like a pro, like it's a problem, but like Mm -hmm. disease gives it a whole different meaning, especially if you look at it in a relationship mindset. Like if you think your relationship is diseased, you're going to go to the doctor, you're going to get it fixed, you're going to try all the cures that you can try. But if you don't look at your relationships as having an imbalance or any kind of problem, and you're just kind of going with the motions and the emotions that come with everything that comes up, then you're kind of just lost in the sauce. And character in my kids is more important than my to-do list. Mm-hmm. Yep. You, if you- Amen. They need, so 100%. something needs to go off the to-do list. If I need to take extra time to, to connect with my, mm-hmm. connect with my child. Yeah. Connect mm-hmm. with them. And like, so go, yeah. go ahead and knock whatever off needs to be and, and yeah. set that time. Cause their attitude also will tell you, Hey, like pay attention. I need attention right now. I heard maybe it was Paul David trip. Kind of same thing. Andrew said, just cause I mentioned someone's name. I do agree with some of the things, but not everything, but this was something he said um, that, think of it not as an interruption, but as a divine intervention. Yes. And if a child is needing Mm -hmm. some kind of correction and it was in one of his parenting books. And if a child is needing some kind of correction, don't think of it as an interruption to your day, as an interruption to the task or your schedule or whatever it is routine. Think of it as a divine intervention from God that he's using that to teach you and them. And so whatever it is, stop what you're doing. And that may be back to where you think of this more as a rhythm than a schedule. Because if you are so rigid on your schedule, and I'm a scheduled person, even with time slots, but if you're so rigid that you, it pains you to stop your schedule to intervene and parent your child or to jump into any of that stuff, then your, your priority, your is, priorities are off. Your priorities are off and your schedule is too rigid. Yes. Your schedule is to help you not to hurt you. And so um, like think of it that destroy relationships yeah. that are inside. Exactly. So make sure that your schedule has that buffer. And that goes to in your blocks, not cramming in 10 things to do in an hour period. If yep. you're doing that, I can almost guarantee it's going to bring you more chaos than peace because you're going to feel like you can't get anything done Yes. because you haven't given yourself any of that grace period 
for the interruptions, for the divine interventions, for when that sibling squabble have happens and you need to stop what you're doing to go over and speak life into them and to build that character in them. Yes. And um, exactly. so I definitely, especially, especially when your children are young. I mean, yeah. uh, we still have sibling squabbles. We still have all the things, but they are so much better now than they were when they were two, four, and six. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you have very small children, um, make sure you give yourself plenty of buffer in your schedule, in your routine. That's when you're building the foundation. Yes. Like that's yes. the little years are the, found, the very foundational years. Um, and just to close us out, um, I don't, we're going to run long on this one again, I think. But to close us out, this is a tip that I recommend to everybody. I even do it myself. Put less mm -hmm. in your schedule than you think you, you can accomplish. So it's better to have less and maybe have an ongoing list of things you want to get done throughout the next several weeks. Put less in your daily schedule than you think you can handle. Mm -hmm. Because that way, if you do have time for something extra, you can pull off that. that in, yeah, it empowers you rather than makes you feel like a failure. Yes. Um, yeah. At some reason, it's a mental thing. And I, yeah, I know yeah. everybody, even good schedule keepers do this. Yes. It mentally frustrates you if you pack your list like a crazy person and then don't accomplish it. That's not yes. the goal of life. No. Right. Um, so just put less than you think you need. Some, to. I, this just reminded me of a quote. Um, <laughs> if you're too busy to do God's work, then you're too busy. Yep. So, it, and that's mm. everything. That's running your home. God's work is running your home. As a mom, as a wife, it's running your home. It's being with your kids. If you're too busy to do God's work, then you're too busy. I like what this one guy said. He was like, don't be so busy that you have to put busy in the waiting room. <laughs> 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 so I think that's going to close us out today. We'll um, close out on that. Don't put busy in the waiting room. Right? <laughs> yeah. All right, close it. <laughs> and we will see you guys on episode... Um, 16 next week 16. Episode 16. <laughs> so have a lovely week you've been listening to the whole topic podcast to hear more to see behind the scenes or to get a hold of us directly visit our socials facebook and instagram the whole topic podcast if you'd like to hear more from andrea visit her blog at dearmark23.com where she talks about whole foods whole grains and whole living if you'd like to hear more from Stephanie, visit theranchershomestead.com, where she talks about simple living, gluten-free recipes, and farm life. If you'd like to see more from me, visit wildandforestcare.com, where I talk about simple living, wild recipes, and natural remedies. Thank you for listening, and God bless.